And good afternoon, everybody. That is our top story at 5 o'clock, uh, Detroit's uh, serial killer case. We have made some new information that has been breaking. Priya, a man has been following this story very closely in the very latest with this individual that is on the screen right now. For the very latest, let's send it out to Priya Mann. Priya. To this uh, case where that one person, D'Angelo Martin, has been charged. Police say this is the only case that deviates from his alleged pattern. Now, most of the victims in these cases are sex workers. Historically, they don't cooperate with police, but Chief Craig says that is changing. More women are coming forward, and as they started to hone in on Martin, police say accuse him of attacking a woman just last week. These two victims fought. They survived. And in one of those cases, D'Angelo Martin has been charged, accused of sexually assaulting and stabbing a 26-year-old woman on Detroit's east side. The one deviation from the pattern is that uh, this victim was younger uh, than the other victims. The second survivor, a woman in her 50s, was attacked last Monday. Police say she was dragged into the same vacant home on Mac where investigators found a third body. We believe, based on the work that's being done, uh, that this suspect is tied into all the crimes. That brings the total at this point to five, two women who survived and three who were killed. The bodies found in vacant homes on Detroit's east side. Most were sex workers and often marginalized in vulnerable population, adding another challenge for investigators. Generally, they're not going to come forward. Uh, many times if they are attacked, they're not going to contact the police. Police have now identified the three women who were killed as Nancy Harrison, Travisine Ellis, and Tamara Jones. Police say this 34-year-old homeless man is their prime suspect suspect. He doesn't have a series of violent crimes in his history, but again, uh, we focused on the right community, and that was the reason why I believe we were able to get information so quickly, because if we hadn't gotten him as quickly, uh, I think he would have struck again. Now, when it comes to more victims, you're looking at a potential six. Deborah Reynolds was reported missing last summer. She had a run in with Ferndale police a month after being reported missing. She was with D'Angelo Martin. Police say the pair were drinking beers outside of a party store. Ferndale police dropped them off at a Detroit gas station, and that was the last time Reynolds was seen alive. Now Detroit police are looking into her disappearance to see if it's connected at all to the investigation into Martin. Coming up at six o'clock, you're going to hear from the Reynolds family as well as Ferndale police reporting live. I'm Priya Mann, local four. Priya, a lot of pieces to this puzzle. Now, Martin has only been charged in that one case that you mentioned unrelated to the serial killer investigation. Are we expecting to see more charges? You know, Karen, we asked the chief that as well. He says to expect major developments within the next 48 to 72 hours. You know, one of the challenges for police right now, the bodies are in various states of decomposition, so it's very difficult even to pinpoint a cause of death. But police say they're expediting the process, and we could expect to see a lot more within the next few days. Send it back to you. All right, thank you, Priya. New at 5. We are getting our first look at a third murder victim in the serial killer investigation. Take a look at your screen. The family tells us this is Tamara Jones. Her body was found on Wednesday morning in a vacant home near Mac and Mount Elliott. Local 4 is speaking with her family right now, and we'll bring you that part of the story on Local 4 News at 6. Our other top story tonight, a child sex sting in Genesee County nets 22 arrests, and there are some very big names involved here. Among them, a senior vice president at Comerica Bank, a financial advisor, and a former candidate for U.S. Senate. Let's get out to Coco McAvoy, who's live tonight. And Coco, a uh, brand new task force responsible for all of this. Yes, the task force is part of the Genesee County Sheriff's Office. The sting was called Operation Predator to catch people who were preying on children. And in total, all of the arrests resulted in 66 felony charges. 22 people arrested in a child sex sting. Video shows the predators being taken down in motel rooms. There are all ages, creeds, genders, and professions with one goal in mind, to have sex with kids. The predators come from several counties across Michigan, both men and women, accused of preying on children, some unemployed, others with big time jobs. He's a financial advisor, very well respected in the community. 
The Genesee County Sheriff, Robert J. Pickell, says the predators were lurking online, searching for potential victims, and they came with a lot of money to pay for sex with the kids. They also brought crack, marijuana, alcohol, but the guns and the knives are what really concern me. The task force isn't done with the arrests of 22 people, though. I have a warning to the pedophiles. The next time you look into your computer and you don't think anybody is watching, look again because you may see my face at the other end of the computer and ghost, the sheriff's ghost, will be right behind me and it'll be the worst nightmare you've ever had. Police are now searching for the last of the 22 suspects, Forrest Williams, and they plan to find him soon. And as of right now, police do not know where Forrest Williams may be. But of course, if you know of his whereabouts, you're asked to call the sheriff's office. Back to you. Coco, I probably have a good idea of this, but did any of the people have a criminal history before this? Yes, a number of them had a criminal history, and one of the guys was actually on the sex offender registry list. So it's really yeah. important to check that list to see where they may be. And we've got a link on our website. Click on Detroit.com. Yeah, all right. Coco, thanks. Well, developing right now, one person has died after a helicopter crashed into a Manhattan skyscraper. Officials say the one person who died is believed to be the pilot. They don't know what caused the crash. They've ruled out terrorism for now. Officials don't know why that chopper was in the area. It's restricted airspace, and the overcast weather wasn't great for flying. Firefighters were sent to the 50-story building after the helicopter burst into flames. Following the crash, no one else was hurt. After a whole bunch of rain overnight and into this afternoon, we are starting, starting to see a few peaks of sun. There's some peaks out there, maybe? Let's get over to Ben here on a Monday. And, uh, well, uh, sales of sprinklers just plummeting right now, Ben. <laughs> I haven't even turned mine on this year, and I'm betting most folks haven't either. Uh, today, we skipped out on the real rough stuff, even though there was a patch of one-inch-plus totals there around Ann Arbor, Salem Township, and uh, much of eastern Washtenaw County. Further north, Owasso, Saginaw picked up over two to two two and a half inches of rain. There's the back edge of the cloud cover and eventually that's going to get us tonight and we'll start clearing those uh, uh, clear, clearing those clouds out as we get overnight. The winds are going to be about 30 miles per hour this evening. They will relax overnight tomorrow. Nicest one of the week. We'll look at the temperatures there, but Thursday another soaker and could be even higher totals than what we got today. More on that in just a few minutes. Jason. All right, Ben, one person was critically injured after a two car crash in Roseville this morning. It happened just after 3.30 this morning at the 12 mile and Gratiot intersection. It started with a traffic stop when the suspect then took off. A few minutes later, the driver crashed at 12 and Gratiot, injuring another driver. The suspect ran off but was arrested a short time later. Also, one person was taken to the hospital after a DDOT bus crashed into a crane downtown. It happened this morning on Michigan near 3rd Street. You can see there's not a whole lot of room in that construction zone. There's no word on the condition of the injured person, but uh, the bus has minor damage. Kara? We have learned the Boston Red Sox have sent a private plane to the Dominican Republic to bring David Ortiz to the U.S. for treatment. The baseball legend was shot last night while out having dinner with friends in his home country. As NBC's Laura Aguirre reports, the fact that he can travel is a good sign. A regular Sunday night out at a Santo Domingo nightclub. Then suddenly, a gunshot. The terrified crowd scatters. The chaos captured on a security camera. Someone is hit. Moments later, Dominican-American and former Boston Red Sox icon David Big Poppy Ortiz was rushed by ambulance to a nearby hospital. A bullet in his back. He is stable. He is out of danger. I haven't spoken to him, but this is based on what the medic explained to me after the operation. Ortiz has been beloved in Major League Baseball for 20 years and in his home communities in the Dominican Republic for charitable work. He's a legendary figure. He's an important figure, an honest figure. Local police say there were two suspects. One fled. The other was beaten and held by witnesses until officers arrived. Investigators say they will interview that suspect once he is treated for his injuries. Until then, Big Poppy fans worldwide will wait for word on their cherished sports legend's recovery. Laura Aguirre, NBC News.
The second suspect remains at large, according to the Dominican Republican National Police. A TV presenter who was with Ortiz at the time of the shooting was slightly injured by the same bullet that hit Ortiz. Gas prices have moved double digits in the right direction for a change over the last week. Today, the average cost for a gallon of gas in Michigan is about 275. That's down 15 cents compared to just a week ago. Here in Detroit, we're paying 277 a gallon, just over the statewide average. The cheapest gas, by the way, is in the state capital, where it's 269 a gallon.